<coughs> Please go ahead. All right, thank you. Uh, I wish we were all up in Shenley Park eating last uh, leftovers from last night's fundraiser, but uh, unfortunately we are uh, uh, in this situation, And uh, but I'm glad that we're able to do this uh, with this new technology. Um, I'm Michael Lamb, I'm your city controller. Uh, it's my job every day, like the Auditor General, to protect taxpayers from waste and fraud and abuse and to really be that first line of defense against public corruption. And I think you know that we've had more than our share of public corruption here in Pennsylvania and across Pennsylvania, the fortune of others. And having officials looking into these kind of issues is very important. It's why it's important to have an Auditor General that understands that role. Um, and so I think there are a number of things that, that the next Auditor General and the current Auditor General need to, need to be looking at. Um, price gouging being one. Uh, you know, the, the Attorney General is already uh, looking into this, but it's really important for the Auditor General to be running the tests. You know, similar to the tests that we run here, uh, the tests that we did in our procurement audit uh, a few months ago, the tests that our county regularly does at the airport to make sure that there's not price gouging going out there. It's the kind of thing that our Auditor General needs to do and the kind of thing that I would do. Um, the, the role we have in, in addressing and correcting misinformation, uh, the role that we have in, um, in dealing with um, protecting whistleblowers, uh, as, as I've had to do on a number of the audits that we do, um, and then of course monitoring the spending under the new stimulus, under the new stimulus bill. You know, I don't know if you saw a story in today's Post-Gazette uh, about the URA and the, the, the um, state uh, small business loan program where they are now going to do that without a fee. Well, that's the result of a conversation that I had with, uh, with uh, Dan Gilman in the mayor's office saying, hey, listen, we really shouldn't be charging a fee for this. And, um, and, and the mayor's office and URA did the right thing in stepping up. But that's the role that, the, that a controller or an auditor general need to play. And, and the biggest way that you do that is through transparency. And I think that you know, as, as your city controller, I have brought unprecedented levels of access and open government to Pittsburgh through innovative tools that I helped to develop. Open Book Pittsburgh, Fiscal Focus Pittsburgh, the Popular Annual Financial Report, uh, the Watchdog app that we've created. You know, these are things that are desperately needed in our Commonwealth and things I hope to bring to the state if I'm lucky enough to be uh, elected Auditor General. I think you also know that I'm the only candidate in this race from Western Pennsylvania. Uh, and that, that geography is important. You know, if we don't do better out here in the West, particularly in Washington County and Beaver County and Westmoreland County, if we don't do better in those places that, than we did four years ago, we're going to lose a lot of races. Uh, we may lose the presidency. You know, I, I, think, I think right now primarily about Pam Iovino. You know, she is the number one target of the state Senate Republicans, uh, and she lives in an area that I know that I'll be able to help her uh, if I'm on this ticket. I know we're going to be able to bring out votes for her. Um, so, uh, but, but my, my, my candidacy is not just about Western Pennsylvania. Well, we're, we're, uh, we're at the end of our three minutes, I'm afraid. What's that? We're at the end of our three minutes. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I will stop then. Um, I appreciate uh, your support. You know, you, I've had your support in the past. I hope to have it again, and I'll, I'll take questions. Well, there was a question that came in fairly early that was uh, for you specifically, uh, which was, it's my understanding that you publicly opposed the increase in the realty transfer tax to fund the Housing Opportunity Fund, despite the fact that Pittsburgh has a shortage of nearly 20,000 affordable homes. Uh, if this is the case, how do you justify this position? So first off, I fully support the creation of the, of the uh, Affordable Housing Trust Fund um, and, and believe that there were better ways to fund it. Um, you know, the, the increase to the deed transfer tax uh, you know, in, in most communities across the state, the deed transfer tax is 2%. In Pittsburgh now it's 5, 5%. Um, it, is a, it, it, is a, it is a tax that um, hurts homeowners, hurts those trying to buy homes, hurts those trying to sell homes in, in Pittsburgh. And if you see the numbers, um, while the revenues have not gone down, the number of sales of residential units have. Uh, so we are, we, we've seen the impact of this. Um, you know, the big boys in the commercial industry, they know how to, how to avoid this tax. They know how to create structures that allow them to avoid this tax. So this is a tax that unfairly hits ordinary, ordinary people. And, uh, and that's why I opposed that tax as the vehicle for creating the affordable trust fund, uh, affordable housing trust fund. In addition to that, um, you know, the audit that we just did this past year, looking at housing, you can see a number of the problems that have arisen uh, through the land bank, 
through the, through a number of our housing programs here in the city. And the fact is that you, when you have a city that for the last number of years has been generating multi-million dollar surpluses, it didn't make sense to me to go to the taxpayers to raise a tax. And particularly, and I think I made this point clear at the time, I will not support a tax increase like that while our largest nonprofits, UPNC, AGH, Highmark, University of Pittsburgh, and the rest of our large nonprofits are contributing nothing to the city's budget. Until the time when those large nonprofits are contributing to our bottom line, I can't go back and support another tax increase and put additional burden on city taxpayers. Okay.